Thank you to uh, all of you who are here in person and welcome also to those of you that are watching online today. Just a small uh, adjustment to the way we've been doing things and that is each announcement will not have its own slide. Uh, we hope that this will help people follow along with the many things that are coming up and, and maybe uh, uh, allow you to, to uh, uh, maybe some more attendance at some of these things. Uh, although I heard the penny auction was really great uh, Friday evening. So, uh, first announcement, uh, the flowers today on the altar are given to the glory of God in the memory of Robert J. Yeske, given by Pamela Yeske. And also a blessed Mother's Day to all of you who are celebrating today, of course. Our Bible studies this week, uh, 6 o'clock on Zoom on Tuesdays and 10 o'clock here on Wednesdays. Congregation Council is tomorrow at 7 p.m. Yankee Corral rehearsal uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. And then the concert Sunday, next Sunday, uh, 4 p.m. I think it's going to be a great concert. It's I Hear America Singing. It's going to be... Yes? Yes. Uh, so uh, I would encourage you to come. Uh, it, they really do a wonderful job. Men's... And, yes. Yes. Veterans are encouraged to come in uniform. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Men's and women's breakfast this week. Uh, Wednesday, 8.30, women to George's, men to AC's eatery. Uh, worship and music committee is this coming Thursday, 6 o'clock. It's a hybrid meeting, Zoom and in person. Uh, new members are welcome to the worship committee if you'd like to help us out with some of the planning for our various worship services. Uh, next Sunday is the last of, day of Sunday school and the picnic immediately following the service. Uh, so there will be grills set up, but you're to bring whatever you want to be cooked on the grill. That way, it, it's not just hamburgers and hot dogs. If you want a chicken thigh or a piece of salmon or whatever you want to put on the grill, um, you, you bring that along and a, something to share, a side dish to share. Sign-ups are encouraged for this so that we can do the proper planning for space and so on. Uh, Christian Ed meeting is a week from Monday, the, May 20th at 6 p.m., and the welcome meeting is that same evening at 7 p.m., Monday, May 20th. Planned giving workshop is still on the books for the 22nd, Wednesday, May 22nd at 6 p.m., but there's a sign-up sheet out there, and right now there's one family signed up. So uh, we'd love to have you come to this. It's a very informative workshop on uh, planning, uh, giving, and, and general will information and so on. So if, uh, if you take the time after church to sign up, that would be great. There is still garden space available in the sharing garden, and I can put you in touch with uh, Susan, who is uh, spearheading all of that this year. The capital campaign is ongoing, and those few envelopes are for you to take home and, and make a special offering uh, so that we can uh, meet our obligations. Ethan Schaller's confirmation project is uh, the blessing bags. So he's collecting snacks and socks, toiletries, personal care products, uh, gift cards, flashlights, batteries, all kinds of different things like that. Uh, and uh, so you are encouraged to contribute to that project. Uh, we're very proud of him for leading that. We have, in terms of our regular offerings, we need every week to meet our obligations, uh, $4,948. Last week we brought in $3,660 with a shortfall then of $1,288. But the more important number is the year-to-date shortfall. So we're just about uh, 32, almost $33,000 behind for the year. Uh, that's still a manageable thing to deal with, but we need to deal with it, all right? So thank you for that. Any other announcements that I've forgotten? Then I invite the children to come forward for the children's sermon. See a few. How are you? I'm going to be asking you guys a question about Sunday school in a minute. So think about some of the things you learned in Sunday school, okay? Good morning. Good morning. Can you guys kind of scooch? Boy, there's some beautiful, beautiful clothes and shoes up here today. I'm telling you, wow. Okay. So Sunday school is about over for the year. And you've been with your teachers and your class now since September. 
And so you've studied and learned a lot of different characters and things that happen in the Bible. So I would love for any one of you to tell me something you learned this year in Sunday school. A person you learned about or a thing that happened in the Bible. A thing that happened and a woman. Uh, what thing did you learn about? And do you know what that was? Somebody slammed into a wall. I, I, I will have to, I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> did you learn about a, a person too? Did you learn about any people in the Bible? Anybody's name you remember? Anna. Anna. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? Did you guys learn about anything that happened? In the Anybody learn? <laughs> you know, I have to tell you this story. When, when I did this one year in my first church, my own kids were little. And so uh, this is what was happening. And so I said, to, all right, I'll give you a hint. There was uh, a guy that was swallowed by a big fish. Nothing. And I said, well, I'll give you another hint. His name begins with J. My daughter says, Geppetto! <laughs> Well, when you go to Sunday school today, yes. Okay. When you go to Sunday school today, maybe ask your teachers to remind you of a couple of the things you learned. Because I know you went over lots and lots of Bible things. And you, I know you do remember them, too. But it's sometimes hard to say when you get up here. And it's, oh, what was that name? What was that name? But there's so many great things that happen to so many important people. And so uh, the next week, one of the things that we're going to do is bring in all the teachers and all of you students just to, just to be uh, acknowledged by the congregation here because of your faithfulness in studying and coming to the classes. We really appreciate it. So even though it's hard to think of things right this minute, thank you for thinking of some things. Um, I know that you'll be remembering things as the time goes on, okay? So head back to your uh, families right now and then later on to Sunday school, and I think you'll be making something also for next week. Uh, for Pentecost, all right? Thank you so much for coming. Bye-bye. Our opening hymn, Congregation May Stand, 655. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your Spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings of Scripture. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts 1, verses 15 through 17, 21 through 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, Paul, Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Holy wisdom, holy word. Marcia will play the tone for the psalm and we will chant it responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the sea of the scornful. They are like 
trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. The second reading is 1 John 5, verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Holy wisdom, holy word. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John in the 17th chapter. This is Jesus speaking. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me in the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours. All yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them, that in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to this world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong in the world just as I do not belong in the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is praying here. It's a public prayer. You know, sometimes he would go apart silently and pray by himself in the wilderness, but this is a public prayer. Scholars call this the hot priestly prayer. And he's praying in this extended prayer for you. 
I find this touching. You know, we're so used to thinking about what Jesus does for us, how he takes our sins upon us, or, or he brings healing to us, or how he brings uh, wisdom and courage into our lives, or how he bestows upon us the Holy Spirit, you know, these, these actions that he does on our behalf marvelous and absolutely central to our faith. But here, we witness our Lord and Savior bringing us to his mind specifically and praying, praying, praying tenderly and mightily to the Father. He's saying several things here. One thing he says is, Father, I, I pray that they would be one. I pray that they would be one. We don't need divisions within the body of Christ. We don't need animosities and suspicions and conflicts within the body of Christ. And we don't need either to sit on the top of the hill here as though the rest of the Christians in town have nothing good to offer. We need to be part and parcel of a joint, united, effective ministry on behalf of this very world, which sometimes doesn't treat us so well. Jesus prays that we might be one. He says also, I pray that their joy might be full. That their joy might be full. That's another thing. Well, sometimes uh, we'll admit some, some Lutherans get this part wrong. Uh, we can get really serious about our faith in a way that sort of makes it seem like it's just really a heavy thing. When I went to seminary, in fact, you could tell the people who'd been brought up Lutheran from the ones like myself who converted into Lutheranism from some other body. All of us that came into the, this tradition from outside of it, we were just like ecstatic. This God grace that we're preaching, this, this love of God poured out upon us. And, and all the ones who'd been brought up Lutheran were like, <laughs> they believed all the right stuff, but somehow they, they weren't that excited about it. So Jesus is praying here to the Father, my joy should be full in them. This faith of ours is supposed to give us a sense of uplift, a sense of, of joyful purpose, and partly also in that oneness, the joyfulness that we can be part of a larger community of faith, larger than ourselves, larger than our congregation, larger than our denomination, that this joy can spill over from inside of us to those around us. And he prays also here, that we might be protected. Jesus is in effect saying, I think, I'm not gonna be here to be their shepherd in the same sense that I was before. When I walked among them, you know, I could defend them against the, the arguments of the scribes and the Pharisees and the chief priests and so on, but now I'm gonna be with them in a different way and they're gonna feel like they're on their own and there are gonna be some hard times. Father, Watch over them. Watch over them. They will need your protection. And they'll need my protection in a different way. I'm praying that they might receive that. And so right now we know of places in the world where the faithful are in their terrible straits. And so we too pray. We copy our Lord. We pray, we pray that we might be one, we pray that we might have joy, and we pray for protection for those whose lives are in jeopardy in any way. And I'll say this last thing about this prayer, because I, I think it's possible to, to misread some of it. He, he, he says things like, uh, they don't belong to the world, I didn't belong to the world, you know, the world hates them. And we could get the impression, if we listen to this prayer alone, that, you know, this is where it's at, and out there it's, But we know if we look at the whole of Scripture, that's absolutely not what he's saying here. It's so you see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God created the world in the beginning of Genesis and looked and said, it's good, it's good. So what's happening here is not that Jesus isn't going to pray for the world or care for the world or try to heal the world or transform the world. But you know, like, like take today, for example, so Mother's Day. A lot of you are today in your prayers, you're remembering your mothers. 
either either they're still alive or maybe you're praying thanks to God for the mother you had when you were younger, something like that. Uh, mothers are on our mind and there'll be a lot of prayers for those mothers in all their situations in this world. That doesn't mean we don't pray for fathers. It doesn't mean we don't pray for children. It means that once in a while you focus. And that's what's happening in this prayer. Jesus is focusing his prayer. Imagine this. Jesus, the Lord and Savior, King of Kings, is focusing a prayer on you, about you. You, his followers. I hope that makes you feel special. You are treasured by this man. You are the apple of his eye, as it might say in scripture. You, you are the, the treasure hidden in the field. You are the lost coin that he searched to find. You are the lost sheep that he leaves the others behind to bring back in. You are to Christ, practically the whole world itself. You are so special and he is saying, Lord, Father, today I pray for them. Their oneness, their joy, and their protection. That prayer is eternal. And of course, because we know the relationship between Jesus and the Father, we know that prayer is heard. You are held closely in the arms of Jesus' intercession. May you be comforted in that, rejoice in that, and may you find purpose and direction in your life from that blessing comes directly from Christ. Amen. Is 735. This might be a new hymn to many of you, but we believe you will pick it up pretty quickly. Mothering God, you gave us birth. 735. speak our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sanctified in Christ and one with him, we raise our prayers in humble confidence. For all mothers and those who offer motherly care within the fellowship of the faithful, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For any who influence public policy, that families, women, children, and communities may experience health, safety, and prosperity, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For an inequitable distribution of the world's abundance, that none may live in need, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate their mothers, those who grieve lost mothers, those who wish to be mothers but cannot, and those mothers who grieve lost children, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that our grateful hearts may overflow in generosity, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the victims of the natural disasters and the countless victims of senseless violence, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For any need you now lift in silence or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these and any other needs, we offer our prayers in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace.
gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Through Mother Eve, you gave humanity its beginning. Through Mother Sarah, you forged the covenant people to share your love. Through Mother Ruth, you gave your people a righteous king. Through Mother Elizabeth, you gave us John the Baptist. Through Mother Mary, you sent us your beloved son. Through our own mothers, you gave us breath and life. And now you bless our lives with bread and wine, the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them to drink, said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering all your acts of loving kindness, we give thanks for all you have done for us and praise you for all you have promised. We are grateful to you for the Holy Spirit poured out upon this meal, this community, and our world. With all those who have lifted voices of joy at your blessings, we too join in the song of faith to you, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. And as our Lord taught us now, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. If you'd be seated for a moment, Community assistance, we will then invite you forward to receive the elements of the Eucharist.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor. Grant you peace. Hymn 625.